the most incredible home that I've ever been. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Probably one of my favorite designs to date, this one. Beautiful day down under in Australia. Patrick Hanley, Waterscapes Australia. And this is a really cool project that we're on in a cool house, huh? Yeah, this is one of my favorites I've done to date and really extraordinary situation that's in the house design as well. Cool house. Look at that bird. Wow. Good morning. Are you the housekeeper? <laughs> wow. Rainbow lorikeet. How gorgeous. What a beautiful bird. Having his morning breakfast. What a cool house. So right up here at the carport, huh? Yeah, there's one right here. The boys did this one. How cool is that? And then so basically what I love about a front yard water feature is everybody that comes in is going to hear that. That sound is going to greet you. And at night, they got the fire part of it. So you got a little fire element. So everybody comes in through the rotunda, comes up here, and then not only sees that, but sees this one waterfalls is too. Look at how beautiful that is. And once again, that sound greets everybody coming to the front door. You want to make curb appeal? Put in the water feature. Got to kind of come over a bridge to the house here. Great front door. That isn't an Australian door. I don't know what is. Kookaburra. And then look at that. Wow. I love my job. Holy cow. <laughs> look at this. Oh my goodness. Is this just incredibly beautiful or what? Like I said, it looks like a hotel. Okay, Steve, I got to ask you, how did this whole thing come about? We started with a hole in the ground and worked from there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes sense. I, I got that. I got well, that part. Yeah, I came here when the house wasn't even built. This is just a bare block with an old farmhouse on it. And I remember coming, having a look at so it. So we bought the block in 18. So probably 2018. I came out and look and it was like, yes, we want to do one of these things. Yeah, get an idea. So what was the original inspiration, Steve, for a well, natural hunt? Based on our whole intent for the house. The idea is one level, spread it out, use the acreage. And as you'll see, the five pods here, the 20 pod, there's a bridge. As you go through the bridge, we'll show you later, it's enclosed. But it's all glass. So indoor, outdoor, because our environment here is amazing. Rather than just put in your standard swimming pool, it didn't fit the environment and what we wanted natural. to do. So natural environment. You know, we've kept lawn down to a minimum that Right. Usable and functional, and the rest of it native gardens. So once they're established, you don't water them, you leave them be. It attracts tons of bird life and whatnot, and we even rescued a snake the other day. Contemporary Australian was <clears> like <throat> call this one, and it's indoor outdoor living, and then something oh, yeah. that invites the nature back into your space. Oh yeah, yeah. just fitted with a whole overall big picture, beautifully and perfectly, amazing. <laughs> nothing here. They liked what we did. They've been following us for a little while and they wanted something very natural for the landscape. So when we came to do the second console to settle where the pond would be, this structure was here, but there's nothing out here. It was pretty much a wasteland and we had to create levels. We had to recreate the levels in this space to get it to be able to sit here. This was the only tree in the space. It was obviously the trees on the outside edging. Everything else here has been planted since. This tree is also a feature and so glad we left it because it's become a really important part of balancing the structure that we've put here. We had to terrace this back area here. We did the works on that, the stone walls as well in here, just to terrace this area to give us those drops and allow us then to also create water seeming to run between the house. This is actually one of our wetlands in there. We had two wetlands, creating those drops and falls through the property, leading through here and then down into our negative edge, down into our reservoir there. We have some steps and entranceways. We used gimpy granite on this project. It took us one month to build, so four solid weeks, including the retaining wall and hardscape. And again, it is probably one of my favorite designs to date this one. I just love how it actually sits in the landscape. It's held by the house and it's almost like the jewel held by the ring of the house in a way. That's what I really like about it. And I've got to say the gardens have really come up over this time. This project now is over two years, two and a half years now, and the water quality is exceptional. This 
beach is sort of one of our signatures. We've been doing a lot of beaches. And I'm really liking how we go with and how we place these around the edge to define the landscape from the beach and give you that easy maintenance edge and crossover. Again, the liner is coming up behind that um, hob. We pour that on top of the liner and then we have a good 600 to 700 mil of sand on top of that moving down. And again, with our one and seven minimum grade, so we don't lose a lot of sand when people walk up and down it. And it's held really good. You do get a little bit of loss, but this is held really, really well. I really love this little step over area. This here is actually a spa. So when I say spa, we actually you can see the seating in it. Again, we got a natural granite boulder cut by our supplier, and then the boys pop that in and cut it to shape and cut it to form. You see those little also contemporary or so cut edges of the stone running through there. It just gives a different feel to it. It's a nice little spot to sit in there. We have a bit of jetting coming in through the bottoms of those stairs as well, so it hits your legs. And again, our stairs coming down into it, and obviously lighting in here. Really understated waterfall, so simple. It's just three rocks you can see there. We'll call it four if you want, and one has its own edge rock sort of built into it, so it's framing stone built into it. Another entrance way in. So we designed it to have this deck, so we have a quite a straight edge through here, and then this is very thick sleeper timber. We're talking 50 mil sleeper timber, rough cut, which really goes with the natural design of this whole pond as well. The big timbers, the chunky timbers. This is also our launching rock for just uh, dropping in. This is our second wetland. Now, this is obviously down on the next level. We have two four by four and a half wetlands in this system. It is really well filtered. And this is the Aquascape wetland filtration. We have the aqua blocks down there. Alacasia brisbanensis again. It's a native elephant here. And look at this. This is one of my favorite things, actually. There was bananas planted in the wetland. You can see them there. There's a big bunch of bananas. Look at that. So that's planted directly in there, which would be absolutely fine. You just have to prune away and not get too many suckers coming up and just keep it under control. But I love that. Beautiful little touch that. Yes, you can grow food in these wetland filters. I've seen it many many times so we'll pop around the back here now down to our negative edge on this one a little bit of a work in progress at the back end here let's turn this aerator off there you go and so this is our negative edge we have the water obviously moving through the whole system and down we have in here 10,000 mm -hmm. liters so we have 90 aqua blocks down in there so the large aqua blocks each one holds about 121 liters and that's the reservoir and then we have our pumping stations or our um, vaults are in there with our pumps inserted in them One thing with the designs on these is leaving space for your plantings to come in. Don't make it too busy with your rock. They always do look a bit rocky when you initially finish them. When I build, I like to leave some rock out and give space for plants to come in. I leave space for plantings later. It would soften that edge. So I'll show you one of my favorite parts on this one. Is that area over there. You can see that chorus over there and the uh, Wormia articulata, the rush. You can see now how the plantings have come in and they're, it's almost melding. You cannot really tell where the water and the landscape start and begin. They're really nice touches. And like I said, in an Initial designs, they can look a little bit bare until the plantings actually establish themselves. I think it was a 220 ton of gimpy granite boulder on this, including some into the retaining walls. We have concrete floor here with exposed concrete. You can see the floor and there's a little bit of leaf matter, which is totally normal. We also have some quite large fish hanging out in here as well. Native fish, jade perch. This is done with a three-man crew plus myself. Again, not too much stone. I just like to keep it a little bit sparse in stone and not too much small stone. Just nice placed, beautiful gimpy granite, smooth stone, gently placed into that landscape there. One thing I do like over here is the overhang of the deck coming over the water. Pretty good for a one month build. It was quite complex. There was a lot of stone work like cutting stone actually to get this one in place. I think that spa area took us a week or four days to actually build it.
folks, does it get any better than this? This is this man's car collection. Tony Stark, eat your heart out. Unbelievable that I get to visit places like this and showcase it to the world. This is what I love about this car room. First of all, which car would you pick? I'm gonna take the Mustang. Look at that beautiful color there. I wouldn't complain with any of these, but my goodness, just the variety and a uh, little home office here. And what I love about the design of this home is the fact that right out here, you look at the whole property is designed around the courtyard with the pond. And so that to me is what living the aquascape lifestyle is all about, how you can actually enjoy it from inside the house, not just outside. So their main seating area right over there, friendly pooch. And then look at this. That's what they listen to. That's what they see. That's what they view. This is what it's all about right here, folks. It's about showcasing how people all over the world in different ways are living the aquascape lifestyle. This is definitely the nicest home I have ever profiled on my channel. Of course, my channel is about the ponds. The pond is equally as splendid as the home, but what an incredible property. So the size of the system is 16 meter from waterfall to negative edge and approximately 10 meters from deck edge across to beach edge over there. It would be in the price range of around 280 to 300,000 now with the different elements. The other element like it, this is the spa area. We also have those stepping stones, the wide stepping stones across and that's quite a deep area through there. That's about four foot. So you can actually swim between those stones. So into the spa area and then back out into our main deep area here, which is 1.8 meters deep. is also well lit and we have color changing lights in this one throughout it. The lighting at night time really makes this a really special feature as well and it really brings to light, no pun intended, but the difference between a day pond and a night pond, they're almost entirely two different features. One thing with the negative edge here as well is that there is actually a farm down down the bottom which has been treated a little bit, but the idea was to continue it down. You can see down below Greg there. Anyway, so it continues down and we can see that farm dam down the back. So a continuation of the water through the property down to the back of the property.